Good morning and welcome to this morning's reflection. We're going to begin this week by looking at the work of John Eldridge and Brent Curtis. Based on a book entitled The Sacred Romance. And they begin by asking, Have you ever come to a time in your life when you had a sense that there was something missing? A sense that somehow life should be more. Or you might have a sense of a voice within you asking, Are you not thirsty? A voice asking you to listen to your heart, for there is indeed something more. But we push these thoughts away because we feel they are dangerous and somehow disloyal, disloyal to our faith. And we try to shut these thoughts out by being more active, particularly more active in the church. We may join a small group or read a book on how to deepen our prayer lives. But this voice does not go away. This voice says, listen to me. There is something missing. You are made for more and you know it. The young prophet Samuel heard God calling and Eli counseled him on how to respond. Yet it took three times before he realized it was indeed God calling Today, we find it even harder to hear God. We fail to recognize the voice of the one calling us. Some of us try to shut the voice up by locking the heart away in the attic, by feeding it the bread and water of duty and obligation. And we do this until the voice almost dies. But sometimes, in the very dead of night, we hear it call to us, a distant whisper. But in the morning, as we go about the busyness of the day, the voice becomes silent. And sometimes we decide to feed this voice, this voice of the heart, on the side. And so perhaps we start a new hobby, hoping that will satisfy. Or we find new friends, or we move to living in this fantasy world of television and the internet. Or we feed the voice on nice, juicy scraps of gossip. We keep hidden our practical agnosticism because our inner world has now become divorced from our outer world but eventually we will give up our spiritual journey because the heart will not come with us down this road and so eventually life seems to become more and more hollow more and more barren and more and more pointless. The life of the heart is a place of great mystery. And life without heart, well, that's simply not worth living. For out of this wellspring of our soul flows true caring, meaningful work, and real worship. Faith, hope and love come from the font of the heart, 
because it is in our heart that we come to know God. And so to lose heart is to in fact lose everything. Many people today have lost heart. We lose heart in times of depression. We lose heart in times of shattered lives, particularly times of broken heartedness. We lose heart in busyness, in drivenness, because we live to merely survive. And underneath all of this busyness and this drivenness, we feel restless, vulnerable and weary. We have all been taught to ignore our deepest yearnings. We are encouraged to live only in the external world, where efficiency and performance is everything. We are seldom invited to live out of the heart. We are often only valued for what we can offer. If we are rich, we are honoured for our wealth. If we are beautiful, we are honoured for our looks. If we are intelligent, we are honoured for our intellect. And so we learn to offer only that part of us that is approved of. And so we learn to live out of a place of performance. And we come to a place of divorcing ourselves from the heart. In the outer life we live from a place of ought rather than from a place of desire. And we replace communicating with God to being active for God. The inner life, the story of the heart, is the life of the deep places within us. Our passions, our dreams, our fears, our wounds. It is the unseen life, the mystery within. The heart does not respond to efficiency and to programs, but it responds to passion, art, poetry, beauty, mystery and ecstasy. And that is why Jesus taught in stories and asked questions because he wanted to engage the heart as well as the head. And so a sacred romance calls us through the heart every moment of our lives. It whispers in the wind and comes to us through the touch of someone we love. It is found in music, in sunsets, in times of great personal suffering. We are all aware of an inconsolable longing deep within us, so that we yearn for intimacy, beauty, adventure. And this longing fuels our search for meaning and wholeness, for a sense of being alive. This voice that calls us, that calls to our heart, this is the voice of God. Our real story is not the story that people see lived out in the world, but rather our real story is the story of the heart. When we are out of touch with our hearts, our faith becomes like a series of problems that need to be solved or principles that have to be mastered. So, we can see that something is wrong. And when we do, we need to ask ourselves the question, what do I need to do to live my spiritual life from a place of honesty and passion. What would that look like for me? Amen.